Welcome back. When we last left our story, Helen had been to Matahi's pearl shop in Papeete. She thought something was going on there that she didn't like, and she's determined to figure it out. Chapter 34. Helen invited Matahi and Ari to dinner at the bungalow Doris had been cooking. Chicken and spinach with coconut milk, tuna with lime juice, and fresh pineapple. She was so pleased with her Tahitian cuisine. After dinner, Lil and Ari went into Papiate, leaving Matahi at Helen's mercy. She wasted no time. So tell me all about this guy. Alfie was his game. Matahi looked amused. Ai Fata and Helen, is that why I'm here? This is a long, an old story and you cannot, just cannot get involved with it. Helen settled back in her chair. Matahi, you're here because we all wanted to have you and Ari to dinner, but now that you are here, fill us in. We have time, don't we, Doris? I, for one, will be right here until Lil gets back, Joe said. Ari will be on his best behavior, Joe. Matahi assured him he's a good boy. I'm sure he is, Alice responded, shooting Joe a threatening look. Okay, okay, Helen said impatiently. Tell us. Matahi, feeling he didn't really have a choice, began. Several years ago, Aifata and I were in business together. It makes me ashamed to talk about that now. We sold anything that remotely resembled a pearl. We painted over off-color spots. We told people that the asymmetrical pearls were special. Anything to make a sale. All overpriced. Helen looked at Matahi, remembering her substantial purchases earlier that day. He noticed her glance. I quit, Helen. Don't worry about your pearls. I only sell top quality now, and I'm honest about what I have in the store. Shortly after Ari was born, I just quit. Well, that's good, Helen responded. It was good, yes. Business was great, until I thought this showed back up in my life, demanding merchandise for next to nothing. He has the pearls poorly set and then exports to sell for over-the-top prices elsewhere. He won't leave me alone. He knows that if he exposes me, my past, I'm done for. He's right. There are many, many pearl shops in Papayate. No one would shop with me again. He has me, how do you say it, over a barrel. Well, Helen said matter-of-factly, you should go to the police. No, Matahi interrupted loudly. Sorry. I didn't mean to yell, but no police. I don't want my past dredged up. It wouldn't be worth it. I know the feeling, Doris said quietly. Matahi looked at her as if to question, but went on. I can just try to hold him to a reasonable take, and I'll be okay. How are you going to hold him, Helen asked. From what I heard, he's pretty sure you can't stop him. You really were listening carefully, Helen, Matahi laughed. Well, yeah. Why listen otherwise, Helen responded. I know we can help. Can't we, Doris? Surely there's something to be done. Mom, Gordon and Alice said at once. Leave it, Helen. Really, it's just not safe, Matahi said, almost pleading. Helen smiled, but didn't reply. She was lost in thought. Ari and Lil had taken Matahi's car. Joe drove him back to Papiate and asked, so Matahi... How dangerous is this guy? Matahi looked at Joe. Ai Fata? He doesn't have much to lose. He has access to pearls all over Papiate. Why do you ask? Because Helen is relentless when she decides to help someone, and I think she has decided to help you, Joe replied. No, Matahi insisted. Please tell her no. I will, Joe assured him, and everyone else will, but she won't listen. I've known this wonderful woman for years. If she thinks she can help in any way, she'll try. I'm just giving you a heads up. I doubt any of us will be able to stop her. Matahi looked genuinely frightened, and Joe was right. Helen's wheels were turning. Can't we do something about I Fata? Helen asked Doris as they were getting ready for bed. What a jerk! What are you proposing, sweetie? Kidnapping? Murder? Well, Helen began. Helen. That was just a bad joke. You're not going to suggest that we kill this guy, Doris whispered loudly. Of course not, Doris. But what? Helen pleaded. But nothing, sweetie. How many people have already told you to stay out of this? 
and Matai says it isn't even safe, Doris reminded her. So you can just go on enjoying this wonderful place, knowing that this good man could be out of business by Christmas, Helen asked and continued, and not safe. Really? What's the guy going to do to an old woman in a shop in broad daylight? We have to find a way to help Matahi, Doris. We just have to. If I didn't know better, Doris smiled, I think I might be jealous. Helen kissed Doris and rolled over to sleep, but her mind was wide awake. Joe and Alice were still up, sitting with Gordon on his porch. The phone in his bungalow rang. Lorraine, hi, so good to hear your voice. Joe and Alice looked at each other in amazement. Gordon, listen, Lorraine began. Some detective was here today, asking all kind of questions about your mom. Gordon, what the hell is going on? What kind of questions, Lorraine? He asked, ignoring hers. Alice and Joe looked at Gordon. He turned away to avoid being interrupted. Good God, Lorraine, why was he asking you? Because you weren't here, she answered loudly. I told him you were gone for an undetermined length of time. I flat out lied and told him I didn't have any idea where you were. You need to tell me what this is about. What on earth could the police want with your mom? Gordon pushed the door closed for privacy. Listen, Lorraine, my mom has herself in a mess. It's complicated and I don't want to involve you any more than I need to. It'll work out. I'm just not sure when or how, Gordon heard himself say. He quickly added, please don't worry. Don't worry, Lorraine responded loudly. You left for Tahiti so fast, I barely had a chance to say goodbye, and now you're telling me that Doris is in trouble? Fill me in, Gordon, or I'll be there sooner rather than later. No, Lorraine, Gordon said immediately, don't come here. You know how crazy that would make people. There's just too much history. I'm sorry, but you know it's true. Then tell me right now what's going on. Now, Gordon, Lorraine insisted. Gordon explained reluctantly, but left nothing out. And I'm sorry I didn't tell you, Lorraine. I just wanted to get here to see Mom so fa as fast as I could. Then all of this Pearl stuff happened. I am sorry. You deserve to know what's going on. Doris killed Polly. Oh my God, Gordon, your mom killed Polly, Lorraine asked, ignoring Gordon's apology. Lorraine, calm down. Yes, it looks that way. That's why the gals are here. But now we have ourselves mixed up with this Aifata guy and things are just crazy. I'll be here for a while. Please try not to worry. I miss you. I'll call soon. Try not to worry? Really? You call me every day, Gordon Martin. Or I will be there. Is Lillian okay? Lorraine heard herself ask. Lillian is wonderful, Lorraine. She met someone she really seems to like. We like him too. I'll call you soon, but please stay put. I miss you, but please, for me. Lorraine agreed. Wow, Gordon. So you and Lorraine, a couple, Joe asked as soon as Gordon reappeared. Well, yeah, didn't you know that? Gordon responded, irritated. Just hadn't seen it so up close and personal, I guess, Joe answered. She asked about Lil. Gordon wanted Joe to know. I guess that's something, Joe admitted. Gordon, I have to give you credit if you can make that woman happy. Okay, you two, enough about Lorraine, Alice insisted. So are we worried about this latest development? I don't think so, Gordon said. I talked her out of coming here. Gordon... I'm talking about the issues with your mom, Alice said, smiling, then added, Lorraine wants to come here. I had to tell her everything, Alice. The police, a detective actually, asked her lots of questions about mom. Of course she wants to be here, but don't worry. She's staying put. She knows she wouldn't be welcome. Gordon, I'm sorry, but the two of you seem happy, Alice suggested. Yeah, Alice. Yeah, we are. Chapter 35 Helen's plan had taken shape in the wee hours of the morning. It involved all of them, a good deal of patience and some nerve. Helen, Doris asked as she made breakfast, why are you pacing? Have your coffee, sit down. I can't, Doris, I'm too excited. I figured it out. I know what to do to get rid of that fool. I thought, where is everyone? I thought they were coming to breakfast. Alice, Joe, and Gordon arrived just in time to overhear. Mom, you've got to be kidding. Alice said anxiously. We can't get involved in this at all. It's dangerous, Mom. 
dangerous. I'm so sick of hearing that, Helen responded. My plan isn't dangerous. Do you think I would put any of you in danger? Your plan, Alice said, shaking her head at her mom. Any of us, Joe asked, thinking of his still sleeping daughter. Listen, just listen. Sit, eat. Here's what we do. They listened, but they couldn't quite believe what they were hearing. You want us to wait for I Fata, Gordon began, every day. Follow him into the store and stop him from talking to Matahi. And how exactly? Just like I said, by taking all of Matahi's time, ask lots of questions. Eventually, I Fata will just leave. Simple, Helen smiled. That's crazy, Mom. He'll only come back. Alice pointed out, and so will we, Helen assured her. Sounds like a good way to make him really mad, Alice continued. What's he going to do, shoot us in the middle of the store in the middle of the day, Helen asked, exasperated. Maybe, Joe suggested. Matai thinks this guy could be pretty dangerous. He's not going to be dangerous in front of customers in broad daylight, Helen insisted. So, she looked around the table, you in? In the end, they had to agree. There was simply no stopping her, and no one was going to let Helen go after I Fata on her own. But, Gordon insisted, we can't push him too far. This could actually get serious, Helen. You have to know that. He has other options, Helen responded. Matahi isn't the only merchant I Fata can blackmail or threaten. Joe looked at Helen. Matahi told me that, Helen. How did you know all this? Eavesdropping, Joe eavesdropping. Seriously? Joe and Alice said at once. Joe shook his head, smiled despite himself, and went on. Okay, we need a plan. A real plan. If things get too crazy, we'll tell them we're going to the police, Doris said emphatically. The police? Helen asked, alarmed. We told Matahi we wouldn't do that, Gordon reminded her. We don't actually go to the police. You don't think I'd do that, Doris continued. We just threaten him, threaten it. Tell him that Matahi doesn't care if things come out. We lie. If we're convincing enough, I thought I should just go elsewhere. We hope, Alice responded. It'll work. I know it will, Helen insisted. It worked for me already. The first time I met the jerk, I just burst into the store and started talking a mile a minute, and I thought I left. It'll work. Doris was still showering when Helen left the next morning. She had written a note saying she was off for a morning walk in town. She wanted to be at Matahi's when he opened, and she didn't want to hear from anyone about how her plan was problematic. She parked and walked along the waterfront of Papaya Tay in her sundress, floppy hat, and tennis shoes. She was about as unimposing as it was possible for a person to be. She arrived just before the store opened. Matai, she boomed when he opened the door. Helen, you're here as I open? More pearls, he asked. No, no, just visiting, she answered. This time of the morning is so beautiful for walking. Tahiti is always beautiful, Matahi assured her. I Fata came through the door. He rolled his eyes when he saw Helen, but nodded politely. Helen ignored him. You know, Matahi, she said, Maybe I do need to see a few more pearls around this time. Let me look. Matahi glanced from Helen to I Fata and back. Helen was relentless. She looked at everything and asked every possible question. By the time she finished, Matahi had other customers and I Fata was gone. They went in twos. They went alone. They drove I Fata crazy every time he tried to speak. Someone interrupted him. Every time he tried to ask for his pearls, someone wanted Matahi's attention. After only two weeks, I Fata seemed to be gone. Matahi's business was booming, and Helen was basking in the glow. Helen, you must be an angel, my angel, Matahi said as he walked toward the bungalow. You really think he's gone, Matahi, Helen asked. That was a little too easy, don't you think? Oh, he'll be back, Matahi assured her, but I'll bet the store it won't be before Christmas. He'll want to stock up this time of the year if he can't do it with me. How can I thank you? Let me take you to dinner. You and Doris, what do you think?
I think it's unnecessary, but sure, sounds fun, Helen replied. They ate at a beautiful restaurant on the waterfront. The seafood was delectable, and the atmosphere was perfect. They talked about Ari. They talked about Dysonville. They even talked about Lorraine. All had agreed not to mention pearls or the store, and certainly not I Fata. Just as they were finishing, Matahi noticed Doris looking around the room. She was hugging herself lightly and rubbing her arms. Something wrong? Matahi asked. No, no, I guess not. Just got a chill, she said. Who gets a chill in Tahiti? She added, laughing. What kind of a chill? Matahi asked, looking around as well. The events of the past couple of weeks had left Matahi somewhat relieved, but still nervous. Even though Ai Fata had stopped coming to the store, Matahi was concerned, much more concerned than he had let anyone know. He was totally out of character for Ai Fata just give up and walk away. Matahi was sure more was coming. He just had no way of knowing when or what it might be. It's nothing, really, Matahi. It's gone now, Doris assured him. I must have been making it up. Making what up? Helen asked, returning from the toilet. Doris got a chill, Matahi answered before Doris could speak. A chill? Helen sat down beside her. You're not getting sick, are you? You're not allowed to get sick right before Christmas. Doris smiled at, heaven, at Helen. I'm not sick, sweetie. The chill passed. Matahi is exaggerating. This wasn't the first time Doris had sensed a presence. She knew someone was following her and had been for some time. Although she hid her concern <clears throat> from Helen and Matahi, she couldn't ignore this. She was sure the police had caught up with her, but they seemed to be taunting her, and she couldn't imagine why. She turned suddenly and looked hard, but nothing. Only the busy city street. Her chill subsided, but not her fear. She knew it was only a matter of time. Chapter 36 On Christmas morning, Doris made a wonderful late breakfast of crusty breads and pastries and a variety of tropical fruits. There were Tahitian shirts for Gordon and Joe and usual potted flowers for Helen to tend. Lil opened a beautiful pair of earrings from Ari and Helen's pearls were a hit. Matahi and Ari came by in the early afternoon. Everyone was in the lagoon. Merry Christmas, you two, Helen shouted from the water. What's up? Just visiting, Matahi answered, spreading Christmas cheer and all. Ari joined Lil in the water, and Helen and Doris walked to the bungalow with Matahi. He handed Helen a package. She opened it to find several pearls of various colors, round and teardrop as well. They're for you, Helen. Enjoy and share with your wonderful family. I can't tell you how much you've done for me. Matahi, how nice, Helen said, showing Doris the pearls. We'll have fun deciding how to use these. Thank you. It's the very least I can do, Matahi insisted. I fought it away from the store for the Christmas season. That was really the best gift anyone could have given me. Helen says you think he'll be back, Joe said, walking up from the water. Yeah, yeah, I do. But I'll deal with that when it happens. If he comes back, we'll be right there, Helen assured him. Matahi laughed aloud. No, Ellen. No, you won't. Absolutely not. If he comes back, I'll deal with it. I may even go to the police myself. I don't know. But no more help from the Wiccan squad. I can't take it. You'll give me a heart attack. You're going to the police? Doris heard herself ask, sounding more anxious than she had intended. What? No, Helen replied. I was just considering my options, Helen. I don't particularly want to go to the police, Matahi assured her. You know that. I promise I won't do anything without telling you first, okay? Helen looked somewhat relieved, but Matahi couldn't miss the fear in Doris's eyes. After a bit, he found her alone in the kitchen. Can I help, he asked. Good timing. I'm just about done cleaning up, Doris answered. I don't mean to pry, Matahi said as he put away the dishes. But I saw the look on your face when I said I might go to the police. And poor Helen, I really scared her. Oh, Matahi, Helen will be fine. If you think you need to go to the police, you should go. It's just that I can't be involved. Is everything okay, Doris? Matahi asked and immediately added, I'm sorry. 
That's none of my business. No, Matahi, no worries, Doris replied. Let's get out of this kitchen, and I'll try to explain. I'm sure this makes no sense to you at all. They walked to the porch. Doris told Matahi all about the kidnapping, but nothing about Polly. Sounds like you did the only thing you could do, Doris, Matahi said. I did, Matahi. I've never doubted that, Doris assured him. And now the police have found you here, in Tahiti, after decades. Is that what you think, Matahi asked. What else could it be, Doris asked, knowing the answer. And Matahi, I haven't told anyone about my suspicions, especially not Helen. Please keep this quiet. If she thinks the police have found me here, she'll be terrified. I have to be absolutely sure first. Of course, Doris, but what are you going to do, Matahi asked. I have no idea. Whoever's following me is certainly taking their time. Trying to spook me, I guess. It's working, Doris assured him. Trying to spook you? Why? Matahi asked. Then continued, Doris, if you're being followed, is this the Tahiti police we're talking about? Doris looked up, a questioning frown on her face. I am being followed, Matahi, but like I said, I don't know who it is. I've never actually seen anyone. What are you thinking? Matahi smiled well. If it is the Tahiti police, they would more than likely be after a local problem, don't you think? They wouldn't be handling a kidnapping from the States. Maybe this isn't about you. Matahi, it must be about me. What else? Doris asked, wondering if it, were, if it were possible, wondering if she could actually relax for just a moment. She let herself believe she wasn't about to be arrested for murder. Matahi looked directly at her. Maybe he began. Doris, has anyone else said anything about being followed? Not to me. Why? She asked. Let's find out, Matahi said, grabbing her hand. No, Doris responded loudly, stopping him. No, Matahi. She continued more quietly, if we ask, everyone will know something's up. Helen will worry more than worry. You know her. But Doris, what if it isn't you the police are interested in? What if it's Aifata? Aifata, really? What makes you think that now, Doris asked. The police in Tahiti have to be on to him, Doris. He's been pulling off this scam for years. They must have seen all of you in and out of the store over and over again, and decided you might be, I don't know, involved. Involved. That's just what I need. Or, Matahi went on trying to reassure her, maybe just able to help. Let's find out if anyone else thinks they're being followed. We don't have to tell Helen. And you should know, I think the store is being watched. The store? Your store? Doris asked. I thought it was just extra police presence in the Pearl District for the holidays, Matahi replied. Now I'm not so sure, but Doris, I think you're okay. This isn't about you if the police are watching my store. This has to be about Aifata. There's no other explanation. No one is after you. Maybe not yet, Doris replied. Chapter 37 Agent Walters got off the plane in the Fa'a'a airport and immediately felt out of place. He was wearing his black suit, white shirt, and dark tie, her standard FBI issue, but he sensed that here this would only make him stick out like a sore thumb. The first thing to do was to get some more appropriate clothing, then Doris Martin. He knew he was being censored. He wasn't sure just who he had offended, but really, an ancient kidnapping case for which the suspect was now a very old woman who may have recently killed another woman, probably just about her age. It didn't even make sense. But here he was. Yes, he had certainly rubbed someone the wrong way. He pushed his way past those trying to welcome passengers with flowers and music and found his luggage and rental car. He headed straight for the hotel. He was tired, tired, and much too hot. He really hadn't packed for this temperature. He wondered why that wouldn't have been so hard, he told himself. Once he was settled, he headed for the nearest clothing store and then took a long walk around Papayate. He knew where Doris was staying. He just wasn't ready to meet her. Not until he had the lay of the land. Maybe not until he had managed to speak to some of those she was traveling with. Excuse me, he said to the woman he brushed on the sidewalk. It was Alice. He recognized her from her photo. 
but he wasn't ready to talk, not just yet. Alice was on the way to the store to ask Matahi and Ari to dinner, again. Alice, Joe, and Lil were leaving Tahiti in a week, and Lil couldn't see enough of Ari. When Alice arrived, she noticed that Matahi seemed distracted. Bonjour, she said to get his attention. Matahi jumped. Now that he was convinced the police were watching the store, it only made him nervous. Oh, bonjour, Alice, how are you? I could ask you the same, Matahi, are you okay? Yes, yes, Alice, I'm fine, he assured her. Can I help you with something? Well, I came to ask you to dinner, you and Ari. I'm not quite sure what Lil is going to do without him when we leave. Matahi hugged her. We'll both miss all of you so much. It's been quite an adventure, to say the least. You'll still have Helen and Doris, Alice reminded him. Wild horses couldn't drag them away. So dinner tonight, about seven, she asked. We'll be there. Beware, Ari asked, coming in from the back. At the bungalow, for dinner, d'accord, his dad asked. Absolutely, Lil already asked me. The store was crowded. Neither Alice nor Matahi noticed the two Tahiti police officers pushing their way through. Alice Wiggins, they asked. Yes, she turned and answered, confused. We need a minute of your time. I'll stop there.